The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Don't let anyone ever tell you that there's a separation from religion and politics. I think Satan invented that statement. If there is a separation, then why are the people that are calling the shots infringing upon your biblical worldview values? Do you have questions about Bible prophecy and how events happening now around our world are lining up with Scripture? If so, you're in the right place. Stay tuned as Jack Hibbs brings a must-see and hear message, What in the World is Next? What do you do when the urge to sin rears its ugly head? Do you give in to the temptation or do you walk away? In his brand new book, Temptation, Pastor Jack Hibbs addresses the alluring enticements that arise in every aspect of life and how scripture provides the encouragement we need to overcome them. The devil will use any means he can to bring us to a standstill in our spiritual walk, whether it's lust, greed, indifference, a short temper, or some other vice. He will find a way to dangle the bait right in front of you. Will you bite? Learn to trust Jesus and resist the temptations in your life with this short but powerful book. Temptation by Jack Hibbs will be mailed to you in thanks for your donation to Real Life Ministries. To order your copy, go to jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346. Order your copy today. Absolutely amazing, especially for those of us who are Christians who have been studying our Bibles for years. We are looking around at the world scene and we're seeing what's taking place, and we watch now in real time biblical elements aligning on the stage of what's to happen next. Imagine going to a play or a musical or a presentation, and all of the stagehands are moving the parts around on the platform and they're just about ready to start the music and cue the lighting. Why? Because the next event is about to unfold. And friends, listen, it is no exaggeration for me to say to you today, you know something's up in the world. We're looking at a never before, couldn't imagine weakening of the United States of America. Many experts believe that we are in the midst of World War III in a very unconventional way that war has begun through all types of economic ploys and tactics, all kinds of policy decisions and actions taken against our military and against our freedoms and liberties. But as many have said, if America fails, where can the rest of the world turn? And did you know that's right in line with biblical prophecy? This world must come to a point where people are gonna look around and say, where's hope? And the Bible tells us that Satan himself will cause his agent to step in onto the world scene. A politician who's gonna look like hope is anything but. Well, for now, let's grab our Bibles and dive in to what in the world's going on. The same God that knows about the past, who prophesies the future, he's also the God that is in control of the future. We need to remember that. We need to stop worrying about stuff. I'm watching all this stuff, and I gotta, I, I'm glad to be an old guy now. When you get older, you don't worry about much. And I grew up in a home, my mom, she could teach a course on how to worry. 
But we're watching right now what's going on with China and how China is manipulating our economy right now and how China is holding up ships off the coast of Beijing that are not coming here, but they're supposed to be going to Houston. They're supposed to be going to San Francisco and Long Beach. They're supposed to be going to London. They're not going. You're not reading about this in the news. They're loaded up and they're parked. They've been told they can't leave these ports. They can't go any further. Why? What's going on? A lot of military analysts are telling us that we are actually now in to World War III. The bombs haven't started flying yet. America's got to become weakened before that can happen. How do you weaken America? You weaken her economy. How do you weaken her economy? You stop buying and selling. How do you do that? You stop the importation of the stuff that we sent away to be made in some other country because of greed and profit, and now it's come back to bite us because we didn't trust God. Yes. The hope is not in the White House. The only hope for America is in God's house. Yes. It's in God's word, I'm telling you right now. And then present day, our God's in control of present day. He's in control of the future, the past, present day. Is your God that big? Have you read your Bible? Let me tell you, church, Know your Bible. The more you read your Bible, the bigger God gets. Oh, yeah. It's an amazing thing how that happens. Oh, yeah. And Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, do not think that I've come to destroy the law and the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill, which is a beautiful verse, by the way, because there's people who will say, I just believe in the God of the New Testament, not the old. Yeah. Well, you got a problem right there because Jesus said, I am here to fulfill everything of the old. <laughs> the Old Testament. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle, one comma, one hyphen of the Hebrew language will by no means pass away till all is fulfilled. <laughs> that's, what God, that's what the author of the Bible said about the Bible. He said, I'd like to tell you, I'd like to debate him on that. Go ahead, but he, had, he wrote the book. It's his book. He's the author. And by the way, he's giving you breath right now to debate him, which is kind of fun, right? Because he could just, you know, Darth Vader, he could just kind of go. <clears throat> he could, you know, I don't believe in God. I think I'm... <laughs> I'd like to see it, but that's not Christian. <laughs> right? So I'm going to run through this. The Bible says, the Bible says that in the last days, Israel will return back to her homeland. For 2,000 years, Israel had no home. And on May 14, 1948, Israel became a nation, not in a week, not in three days, not in a month, not in a year, but based, but based upon the book of Isaiah. God says, I will re reassemble my nation in one day. And little did President Truman know that when he defended and stood alone in many ways against the nations of the world, declared, I support, America supports, the United States is behind the creation of the state of Israel. On May 14, 1948, Israel was born, and on May 15th, Israel was attacked. She's been in her land ever since. She's not going anywhere. God says in the book of Amos, once I've brought them back from all the nations of the world, they will never again be uprooted. The Bible says Israel would be on the map again. Question to any skeptics, is Israel on your map? Yes. Since May 14, 1948, the answer is yes. The Bible says that the Jewish people would return back to their ancient land in unbelief. The book of Ezekiel, chapters 36, 7, and 8, that Israel would move, Jews would move from their foreign homelands, if I can put it that way, and move back to Israel, though their ancestors had not been there for 2,000 years. Jews were making aliyah. I'm going home to a home I've never been to before. And Israel today is one of the greatest cutting-edge nations on technology. In fact, if you go with us and we'll drive up what is their version of the Pacific Coast Highway, it's the Via Maris, it's the Mediterranean uh, 101. <laughs> what are you going to see? Hewlett Packard, Raytheon, Microsoft, Apple. All these corporations, did you know that? In their Silicon Valley. 
It is the epicenter of technology now. The Bible says that the world would be increasing in wars. Now, you can be a skeptic today and say, oh, I don't believe in the Bible. Well, then, listen, the Bible says that as we get further down the timeline, that there's going to be an increasing amount of wars. Jesus said there'll be, and you read it today, wars and rumors of wars. This slide shows you what's going on with Seoul, Korea right now. Officials and experts in Washington and Seoul agree North Korea is set to conduct its seventh nuclear test in its first since January 2017. Looming North Korea nuclear test leaves U.S. and South Korea waiting for bad news. Next, China and Taiwan. You guys all know, right, that China has been biting at the bit to take Taiwan back forever. Why are they talking about this now? Because they can. Let me ask you this. What's happening now is, who's going to stop them? Who's... Who's going to stop China? Hey, no one's going to stop China. No one can stop China. Wars and rumors of wars. The Bible says that there's going to be a destabilization of global economics and currencies. Don't worry, don't leave yet. There's some encouragement coming. <laughs> the Bible says that there'll be global unification. Revelation chapter 13. It's being dubbed, it's being pawned as the great reset in Davos all the world major players have signed on which is interesting because it's not only nations it's the world elite the gates the Bezos the princes the kings of this world. Isn't it interesting? The book of Revelation says that when God intervenes in the tribulation period, that the kings of the earth will mourn over their loss when it says that all the trading that they did by the sea would stop by virtue of God's intervention into the world. That's, that's in the future, but wow, the power of that. Think of that. Think of the power of God. Look, I missed it, I guess. I, we were not here, but apparently... It's a shockeroonie. There was an electric storm here? And uh, normally if you see an electric storm, don't you feel a little insignificant all of a sudden? You don't see anybody bragging with a lightning rod in their hand. God can humble the nations in a second, people. The Bible says. The Bible says that the Middle East would be in a state of crisis and that Israel must be isolated from the nations of the world. I want to show you what Russia is talking about. This is actually insane, but not insane. This is part of a world war spooling up. I guess I should stop. Leave that on the screen. Let me give you some encouragement. How many of you are young? When you're 40 or under. I can say that. I'm way over that. So come on. Well, don't be shy. No, I don't want them to find out. <laughs> That's it? How many of you are 40 and over? I thought this church was so much younger. I thought we had a young church. No, I'm kidding. Listen, are you thinking about building that house or going to that school or getting that job or having that baby or getting married? Listen. You say, well, I was until I got here today. <laughs> nope, that's the awesome thing about being a believer. Do it. Amen. Do it. So I was praying to the Lord for confirmation. God, give me a word. Should I marry her? Yes. <laughs> I mean, if they're a believer. As believers, we don't live in fear. We don't know the day or the hour. She said, yeah, but with all this stuff going on. Listen, not, this argues so much for you having a tight, beautiful, knit family unit, friends and family, and a church connection. Doesn't mean you just, well, that's it. It's over. I heard the message. No, 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 no. The world may think like that. We are believers. We live joyful, awesome, radical lives for Jesus. Look at this. This is almost funny if it wasn't so real. Russia reportedly drafts UN Security Council resolution condemning Israel over Syria. Did you follow that? Russia is talking to all the nations of the world. We want you to vote to cut 
Israel off because of what they're doing in Syria. Why doesn't somebody at the United Nothing say, why do you care? Aren't you busy in the Ukraine? Do you see what's happening? You guys are old enough. This is World War II type stuff. What do you care? Here's why they care. Russia has a treaty to supply protection to Iran, Persia. You say, Jack, you're losing me. Dude, I don't see anything on there about Persia. That's because Persia's in Syria right now. In fact, next slide, guys. You have the slide about the palace? Uh, there, this is great. Israel, watch this. Israel warns Assad, that's him. His palace could be target of next counter Iran strike. Did you get that? He's the leader of Syria. But Israel says, we are attacking Iran. Where? In Syria. What's Iran doing in Syria? <laughs> They're pointing missiles at Israel. And I got to tell you, Iran, Persia is smart. Do you know where they put their rocket launchers and missiles and stuff? By schools and universities and hospitals. And next door to the king's palace. <laughs> Can you imagine the king, ex excuse me, I think I saw a rocket near my house. What is this? What is this rocket? Pointing at Israel at my house. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. We, we're using your house. We're going to attack Israel from your house, from your front yard. And then Israel, Israel will retaliate. But what do we care? Because we're Iranians. We're Persians. You're Syrian. We don't care. This is what's happening. This, listen, this world's gone mad. If you're not a Christian, why not? What in the world? The Bible says that Israel will be standing alone in the last days. All nations will turn their back on Israel. What will this government do with Israel? And then the Bible says in Isaiah 5, 20, chapter 5, verse 20, woe to those who call evil good and good evil. And I want you to think this through now. Woe to those who say, that's not what it is, this is what it is. The Bible says God is good. The Bible says that God does good. But the Bible warns that there's going to be people who call evil good and good evil. Convoluted, at least. Who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. I can sum this up, one verse with one word. Confusion. 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 I say all of this to say to you today, and you be the judge. Jesus said, when I come back, it's going to be like it was in the days of Noah, where man was thinking evil constantly. Jesus said, I'm going to come back at a time when it's like Sodom and Gomorrah. He didn't say like Detroit and Schenectady. He said, Sodom and Gomorrah. From those cities, we get sexually transmitted disease words from. We get sexual acts from those cities. <laughs> Jesus said, there's going to be a time of insane, confused, aberrant sexuality on the face of the earth, and that's an indicator of my return. What's happening now, church, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change for anything in the world. I know this sounds rough. I know this is too much reality, too much information. But let's remember this. Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins, and he rose again from the dead, but that only blesses your life if you receive his offer. But can't you at least see that the world is trending exactly as the Bible said it would? Can you see that you need him so badly. I need him so badly. And is it possible, I believe it is, that God is saying, America, 
Christians, pastors, I handed you an opportunity on Friday. Honor me with it. The decision is ours. Don't let anyone ever tell you that there's a separation from religion and politics. I think Satan invented that statement. If there's a separation, then why are the people that are calling the shots infringing upon your biblical worldview values? Abortion is not a political issue. It's a spiritual issue. Because God makes life, gives life. Freedom, freedom is not a political issue. It's a God-given stamp on our hearts. I am thrilled to see what's going to happen next because God has handed, extended an olive branch I think I know you. I'm going to do everything I can and beyond what I can to wear myself out, to do him right, to do him good, because I don't want to fumble this close to the end zone. Let's do the right thing. Father, we praise you. Father, we thank you. Lord God in heaven, all of this can be healed if we just let him rule and reign in our lives. He's loving, he's kind, he's tender. And he wants to transform your life. He paid for it at the cross. He guaranteed it with an empty tomb. And he's extending it to you right now for the taking. Make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life. You'll never regret it. So we talk a lot about a worldview, and as you just heard a moment ago, that there's these dynamics taking place in the world around us. Every single one of us right now, every single one of us watching this program, and even if there's someone not watching it right now, let's say they're biking or they're at work, right now in their minds is the question lurking, what's happening? What's going on? We see the disruption of what's taking place in Europe. We see the the Middle East all of a sudden plunging, even lunging toward war. We see the saber rattling of China in the South Pacific and in the North Pacific. And we see the fear that is being sent to the Taiwanese and the Japanese and the South Koreans. The globe, as it were, almost seems to be shaking. What are we supposed to do? First of all, understand this. Jesus said that in the last days, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. That means you do not need to be shaken. You do not need to be worried. So, Jack, what are you talking about? I'm talking about you and I divorcing ourselves from the worldview that you and I have been predominantly brought up with. That it's either red, white, and blue America, and don't get me wrong, I love my country, but... It's not some kumbaya type of world anymore. What we're looking at is really a time when you are to turn your eyes toward the word of God and to God himself. When we see these things, Jesus said, begin to happen, look up because your redemption draws near. Having a biblical worldview means I view everything from the money in my pocket to the time on my hands to the world that's in front of me my leisure time, my work time, my family time. And if you're single, all the time you've got, everything about your life is to be filtered through a biblical worldview, meaning, what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about this moment of my life? You say, Jack, are you, are you crazy? I'm not crazy. I'm encouraging you to develop a worldview where Jesus is Lord, and you can only know that through the Bible. And it's in the Bible where we want to keep you. That's why at jackhibbs.com, you can go there and find out much more 
about the Lord Jesus Christ, about his word, and what you can do about having a personal relationship with the living God. What do you do when the urge to sin rears its ugly head? Do you give in to the temptation or do you walk away? In his brand new book, Temptation, Pastor Jack Hibbs addresses the alluring enticements that arise in every aspect of life and how scripture provides the encouragement we need to overcome them. The devil will use any means he can to bring us to a standstill in our spiritual walk, whether it's lust, greed, indifference, a short temper, or some other vice. He will find a way to dangle the bait right in front of you. Will you bite? Learn to trust Jesus and resist the temptations in your life with this short but powerful book. Temptation by Jack Hibbs will be mailed to you in thanks for your donation to Real Life Ministries. To order your copy, go to jackhibbs.com or call 877-777-2346. Order your copy today. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there, you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.